Now, I would like to give you uh, uh, just a few moments of update. I think it's vital that we keep you in touch. Uh, many of you are already staying in touch with the events that are taking place in our nation, in our area, our nation, and the world. But I think it's vital that the Church of Jesus Christ stay in touch and in connection, not removed, not isolated, not hunkering and bunkering down, but actually in touch with what's going on around us because our God and, and our relationship with Jesus Christ does not remove us from this world, nor does it uh, force us to isolate ourselves because it is not sufficient to help us to stand. But our relationship with Jesus Christ, the reality of a real relationship with God, actually gives us increased strength and the ability to stand and also to influence. And so it's vital that the church be in touch with what's going on. A couple of things that I would like to share with you before we jump into the message here today that God has laid upon my heart. Uh, a couple of prayer concerns. Uh, they are informational, and, and yet we want to bring them before you not so that we so much just inform you, but so that you and I can be praying and we can see God change things by his power. Just this past week, the famed pollster and research um, leader, George Barna, uh, concluded a, another survey in the United, an extensive survey in the United States, and he revealed that according to his recent nationwide survey, to his shock and, and to his dismay, it, that 41 million, approximately 41 million individuals who theologically would be classified as born again, 41 million individuals that according to the theological, their theological status would be considered born again, are planning on sitting this election out. And that was just this past week that survey was concluded. 32 million of these attend church regularly every Sunday. So the shocking result of his survey is, as you've already concluded, 32 million individuals like unto yourself that attend church regularly um, at the church that would be considered an evangelical church, believing that we must have a vital relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, evangelical most often qualifying as those who believe that an individual can be regenerated, renewed, uh, born again by the power of Christ, are planning on not voting. The vast majority of these Christians, when questioned as to, as to who they would vote for, um, lean towards one candidate in particular, and that candidate therefore will suffer more than the other in regards to these 41 million, excuse me, who plan on setting this election out. The reason for not voting um, is because they said of the influence of the church they attend and the pastor's attitude. Only 56% of the evangelical churches Barna discovered in this last survey even bothered to encourage their people to vote. So only 56% of the churches across the nation up to this point, we're just a couple of weeks away from perhaps the most significant election in the history of our nation, perhaps outside of the one that was uh, the one in which Lincoln was elected, only 56% of the evangelical churches have even encouraged their members and their attenders to vote. These same people said if their pastor told them that voting is a responsibility, they would probably vote. So it conclusively points back to the pastors in our nation and that people are not voting and, and they admit that the reason they're not voting primarily is because their pastor has not encouraged them to do so and has not made it a point, really, of even addressing on Sunday morning. He discovered as well that generally across the nation there's been a 5 to 10 percent decline in the interest, not just among Christians, but across the nation in the upcoming election when compared to the 2020 election, which also is a startling statistic. Uh, last election, 61% of the voters turned out. Barna is predicting 53 to 55% turnout this election, this general election. Now, uh, unfortunately, among Christians, they, they are far greater in their lack of interest in the general population. He discovered that 
that there is a 10 to 25 percent drop in interest among evangelical Christians in this upcoming election as opposed to the 2020 election, which is greater than even the general population in the United States. They dislike both candidates, he discovered, is the reason, one of the reasons they're not voting. They don't like either candidate or they don't feel that their vote will make a difference. 50% of those surveyed said they don't believe their vote will make any difference, so they're not going to vote. Now recognize that once they tally those votes up, uh, once they tallied this survey up, that is equivalent to 41 million. So 41 million people have erroneously figured that their vote will not make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, 41 million people would cause a landslide in either direction. So they're believing a lie within their own mind. 50% told Barna that the, the election is too controversial, and, they, and these are their words, too controversial, and they don't want to get involved. Christians, Barna discovered, are less likely than any other group being studied to talk to people who will vote differently or think differently than they do about the upcoming election because they do not desire to be involved in any conversation that is controversial. So they, therefore, by that, are eliminating any possibility of influencing society. So with this, of course, I found this to be very distressing, as have many. In fact, there are nationwide uh, national ministries that have focused upon this and have spoken about this just in the last few days, about this alarming survey as to the millions of Christians that are planning on being AWOL during the election, this upcoming election. It is truly a five alarm fire that we are facing. And so what can we do about that? Well, first of all, let me back up a moment. We take in the United States far too lightly our privilege of voting. And I know I'm preaching to the choir right now. But by and large, we take our privilege of voting far too lightly in the United States of America, if indeed the expected turnout will only be 53 to 57 percent. Do you realize that if you lived in Australia, you are fined if you don't vote? They keep track of the voting, and if you don't vote in Australia, you're levied a fine. And they take that seriously in that nation. And we, we take it so complacent, we're so complacent about our voting, I am concerned that it will be our demise. So what can we do? First of all, we have a few of those My Faith Votes signs out there in that little what we call the bus stop. We won't have individuals out there. I mean, I'll be out there. Pam will be out there today when we say goodbye. We can get those to you. But there's a handful of those signs. The least you could do is you could put one of those signs in your front yard and say that we should vote. And that would at least remind Christians as they drive by your house that, that we need to vote. And thank you for those who have taken those. We've seen them all over the county. Pam and I have been all over the county in recent couple weeks, the last week, especially the last few days. And we see those signs. We're very shocked. We see signs and, well, they must attend church at the center. There's one of those signs. So thank you for those who are putting that out. So we can do that. That's the very least. The second thing you need to do is to, is to encourage your Christian friends to vote. And if any of them tell you they're not voting, to, to really speak up against that and, and say, look, I, this is something you, you must do and really encourage those to vote. And then thirdly, we need to pray. We need to pray that God will stir not just Christians to vote, that they will be awakened by the Spirit of God or something. God will use something to awaken them as to the dire need of, of voting during this upcoming election, because truly the future of our nation is at stake. And I don't say that in any, any means just to be dramatic or any, for any uh, purpose just to be dramatic. I believe that with all of our heart. We know God is in control, but to flippantly say, God is, con is in control, and then not to vote or do anything about it, in my opinion, is, is to be really, is, is to be, um, um, to, to be frank with you, it is, is to be disobedient to what I believe to be the call of God upon our lives as Christians to be salt and light in this society. So let's pray. Let's pray, and let's vote.